Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. In this week's guitar lesson, we're going to take a look at a Muddy Waters-inspired solo composition. That means you can play this all by yourself. You don't need a jam track or any accompaniment. You just grab a guitar and you can start playing. And I did you the favor of leaving it in standard tuning, and there's actually no slide. Even though Muddy obviously would play electric guitar and he would play with slide, um, we're not going to be doing that, but we're going to be simulating a lot of his slide licks. And this is all standard tuning. It works well on electric or acoustic guitar. So either one that you have, you can you can learn this. And, uh, and I'll break it down and explain it as we go through the lesson. So I've got this lesson split into two parts. In this video, we'll take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half and gain access to the on-screen tab viewer and the tab itself, download the tab PDF file, you can go to activemelody.com, go to the lessons page, and do a search for EP. 213, that's the lesson number for this lesson. So let's go ahead and get started with part one. All right, so this song is in the key of E, and this is pulling from just some classic Muddy Waters licks, licks that you'd hear him use over and over again, no matter what song he's playing. So a lot of times he was playing in standard tuning, even though he'd be playing slide, and you'd see him with a capo maybe on the third fret or so. So he could use these same licks, and just by putting the capo down, he could change keys. And so you see guys like uh, Muddy do that, uh, uh, Jimmy Vaughn will play with a capo, Albert Collins will play with a capo, and they do that so that they can use these licks that have some open strings in them, and they can just transpose them easily. So, that way you're actually kind of playing the same licks, you're just changing the key by adding the capo. So the first thing I do was come up here and play this E7 chord, and I'm playing it like this, instead of playing an E7 maybe down here like you're used to, it's played up here. Now that's using the D7 chord shape. So if you know how to make a D7 in first position, slide it up two frets, and that's your E7. So just remember that going forward, that you can play an E7 chord there. Or, if you switch it around, that's making the D chord shape, you're making an E chord if you play it here. Just like that's a D to D7, that's an E to E7. Hopefully that makes sense just by sliding it up. So just playing those top three strings. So it starts with a downstroke on the third string, and then an upstroke where I'm trying to hit strings one, two, and three, or just one and two. So to count it in, you'd go one, two, three, four. So that upstroke happens on the one of the next measure. Then you're going to play three of those thumps on the low sixth string. So it's one, two, three, four. Now we're going to go, we're going to take that same shape. Play the third string, the one and two string, and then slide it just down. Everything goes down uh, a step, a half step. And then I hit the bass string, the same bass string. So we stay on the one chord, so I hit that three more times. One, two, three. And that's something you hear Muddy do all the time. I think he got that probably from Robert Johnson. But I love that, taking that seven chord and then going down a half step and then back to where you started. It's just a really cool sound. So, I, I could have played this finger style and I thought about doing it like this, but I thought it would be probably better to show this with a pick. I know a lot of a lot more of you are pick players, and plus if I were playing this on electric guitar with a band, I, would, I wouldn't do it finger style. I would just do it with a pick like this. So it gives you some options. You can do it finger style if you want to try it that way. Okay, but here's how we started then. Two, three, four, two, three, four. Now I'm going to do 12 of these. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Notice all upstrokes of the right hand. Then I'm going to come back and go. There's six. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So now and the, the important thing to do with that is just to make sure you're doing the triplets. Triple lit, triple lit, one, two, three, one, two, three. That way you could have, I mean, you could do it different ways. You could go. If you wanted to slide it in each time, that's really up to you. There's no right answer to that. And I've heard it done a million different ways. But that's how I tabbed it out. Now to go to the four chord. You go into this little shuffle thing that takes you right there. And I love that because I use that all the time. It's just a, I'm kind of brushing the third and fourth string. So it's technically wrong, but it happens so quickly it, it works. And then I take my middle finger and play the third fret sixth string. 
And then I come up here and bar the first four strings on the second fret and play strings five, four, and three to play that A chord. So it goes. One, two, three. And you'll see that in the tab, it's a triplet. So practice that in, as a really kind of a cool transition to get from the one chord to the four chord. You can use it each time. It, it's a real nice little rhythmic thing to do. Okay, now once I come to the A chord, the four chord, I just hit that once and then I went and play that lick there. So that's playing an A7 chord. So keep the bar there on the second fret. Ring finger goes down on the third fret first string. And I kind of raked across strings uh, three, two, and one. And I, when I hit that last string, I push it a little bit sharp. It gives it kind of a nice twang sound. Then do an upstroke on the open one. Middle finger goes down on the second fret second string. We go back to do another upstroke on the one string, the open one string. And then I go back to the third fret first string and I hit that with, put a little vibrato in there. Now where are these licks coming from? Even though we're playing the four chord, which is an A, in my mind I'm staying in the key of E and I do that through the whole thing. So anytime I'm playing a little fill lick, I'm just playing the E minor pentatonic scale since we're in the key of E. Now some of you will notice that note is not in the minor pentatonic scale. And you'd be right, that's in the major pentatonic scale for the key of E. But this is where you can blend those two. And check out EP130, uh, a whole lesson I did on mixing the major and minor pentatonic scale if you aren't familiar with that. Okay, let's back it up from the beginning. We have one, two, three, four. Okay, now I'm going to re repeat that. Okay, so after... Then I went... So that's a one, two, three, four. It's a muted down, and then we go into that same lick that I showed you where you do strings three and four. There's the third fret, so that's the open strings three and four, I should say. The third fret, and then back to the A. So the only difference between that and the way we did it the first time is there's a muted downstroke in there. So we have... See, it's one, two, three, four. Think of it that way. One, two, three, four. And then I repeat it. That's the same. And then I went. So it's a third fret, first string. Push it a little bit sharp. Open first string. Do an upstroke on the second string, or the open B string. And then. Isn't that nice to get us down to that E? That's going from the four chord back to the one. So that's a slide from the 3rd fret, 3rd string, down to the 2nd fret, with the middle finger. Then you do an, play the open 3rd string and do a hammer-on to the 1st fret, 3rd string. And then I play the low 6th string, or the low E string there. So it goes... And after I hit that, I do an upstroke on strings 1 and 2. And then we get into a classic Muddy Waters slide thing that you hear him do all the time that goes... Now, that doesn't sound as good when, I'm, when I've got frets in the way and I'm not using a slide, but what you would do if you had a slide on your hand is you'd come up and play right there on the fifth fret, then slide it down, play the open, back to the fifth fret, and then up to the fourth fret, and then open. Since I'm not using the, uh, the slide, I'm just going to fret that and try and simulate that slide that uh, slide lick that he uses all the time. All right, so let's back up and play from where we first go into the four chord. Okay, now I'm gonna do another muddy lick where I'm doubling up. So I'm playing the, that same note, that E note, but I'm playing it across two strings. So I'm fretting it on the 5th fret 2nd string while I'm hitting the open 1 string. So you go... 
Just this little slide here from the fourth fret up to the fifth fret on the second string. It's a cool sound. I use that a lot, actually. I mean, it, think, think of all of these little licks as takeaways. If you walk away from this lesson with nothing but that. So when you're playing a blues and E. You can start to piece all these things together in your mind. They're like little words that you're using. So I slid it down, hit the open B string. So then I'm playing this B7 chord, the 5 chord. And the way I'm making that is I've got my middle finger and ring finger both on the second fret, strings 5 and 3. Index finger goes down on the first fret, string 4. And then my pinky goes down on the uh, second fret, string 1. And the way that I'm playing it with the right hand, so it's easy to make with the left hand, the right hand goes... Well, first of all, I walk up to it. So that's just an open fifth string, first fret, and then make sure you use your middle finger there on the second fret fifth string. So that you can quickly see how those fingers fell into that chord. And then I use my... This is a hybrid picking technique where I'm going to use my pick on the fifth string, my ring finger on the one string, and play... So really all I'm doing is hitting the on the beat with the pick. So it goes. So watch my right hand. Let me get it in frame here. So you can see those are together, those are together, and then that one's by itself. And then, then I hit the chord to kind of get out of it. And then I go right back in, into that little pull that happens there on the 3rd fret 6th string to get us back to the A. And this time, to get out of the A chord or get back to the 1 chord, I love that lick. That's something you hear Muddy, this little walk up, it's almost like a boogie woogie piano. So let me show you that. That's the you're barring the first four strings there on the second fret, playing strings five and four. A little power chord. And then I'm gonna take my middle finger and go to the third fret, fifth string, do a hammer on to the fourth fret, fifth string. And then play the fourth string, which is behind the second fret. And then my ring finger or your pinky, whatever's easiest, comes up to the fifth fret, fourth string. And when I hit that, I pull it a little bit. And then this finger, my index finger, comes down to the second fret, and I played strings two and three, barred there on the second fret. And then there's that back to the one chord. You can hear I built the E chord, where I played the open third string and then hammer onto the first fret. And then when I do that, I hit the low sixth string and then the one string to kind of basically build the rest of the chord. And then we do the turnaround lick, which goes... Great lick. It's so easy to do, and it's it's just awesome. I use this a lot, too. So it's a hammer-on to the, on the third string, uh, first fret. And then there's two ways you can do it with your right hand. I use hybrid picking, where I pick, and then I use my middle finger on the second string, ring finger on the first string. You can do it that way, or you could pick it. You go. I mean, either way would be correct. And then all you're doing is walking this finger up four frets, starting at the first fret, second, third, and then once you get to the fourth fret, I hit strings four, or sorry, three and two at the same time. So it goes, and then I do little turnaround back to the 5 chord. There's that same walk up, open 5th, 1st fret, 2nd fret on the 5th. And there's your B7 chord. And then we're ready for part 2, which goes into the... It's really more of like an Elmore James kind of slide. Um, simulating, again, slide that you would, you would be using, but obviously we're not. Alright, so that made sense, right? Alright, let me back up now, and I'm going to go through everything slowly, one more time, 
Uh, so you have this as a final reference, and then I'll see you in part two. Make sure you check out the tabs if, if you're struggling with any of these. Okay, here we go.